Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're doing a shop video. Haven't done a shop video in a while because we've been building the house. But uh, I finally got a beam for this thing. Uh, I can't remember if I've told you guys about the plans for the shop beam, but uh, I've got it, finally. And I paid way too much for it because lumber in 2020, uh, 20, 2021, it's horrible. But I got it. Uh, so I want to show you how my plan to uh, set this thing up and I'm I'm filming kind of mid progress so I can show you the rigging and how I've done everything and so far I've managed to do pretty much all this by myself so if you're a one man operation uh, get creative and uh, get yourself a big lever and you can move the world so the goal of this uh, we talked about in previous shot videos I've got this kind of uh, platform landing uh, loft area right going up the stairs and then gonna have this extend all the way across the shop. Um, ideally, we do that with a clear span. That way we don't have any intermediate posts and underneath is nice and clear for whatever we wanna do. So what the, do the math, that span comes out to almost 22 feet, like just under 22 feet from end to end. So uh, I use my friendly neighborhood uh, lumber yard locally here and told them what I wanted and they did the math and they said, okay, so for what you need, you need, uh, in this case, it's a 16 inch LVL. Um, I think they're like an inch and three quarter, inch and five, you know, inch and every bit of an inch and three quarter, if not bigger, um, width. And you need two of them doubled up. So that's what I did. I ordered it 22 feet long. I cut off the excess there and uh, hoist it in place. Now, to support it, their suggestion was they sent these brackets along and they said, use three two by fours in this bracket. Well, as you can see, I put four in there because it it either fit four with, if I cram them in or it uh, would not fit three, like with some slops. So these are like four by six post brackets and the lumber guy said use three two by fours. I, the math doesn't check out there. So I made it work with four two by fours. And then um, on the top here, so you can see it, I used a, another like post, you know, two, four by six post cap and it didn't quite make it. So I had to get creative to get that kind of wedged in there and bolted and fastened. And so it, for this type of storage, this utility storage, it's going to be fine. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be plenty strong. So I put all those posts in place. I cut it to length and this will sit where the top of this beam will be flush with uh, you know the top of the uh, the rim joist there to where I can just lay subfloor right on top, and then you can see my my uh, my um, the other ri um, rim joist back there, and I would just lay my two by six rafters or two by six joists on top of that and use joist hangers on the face of this big beam, and then we will have a bunch of extra loft storage. Um, so hoisting this thing up by myself. Uh, these things are heavy. Like you can't pick this up by yourself. Two guys, one on each end of, of this, they can move it, but it's not fun. So I managed to drag this, you know, once I got into my shop with the help of my dad, I, I was able to drag this around the concrete floor and scoot it into position and then, you know, prop it up here and there to where I could get it uh, to the rigging to hoist it up. And what I chose to do, I went to Harbor Freight. And I got one of their little, uh, all this is, I think, 2,000 pound rated equipment, uh, just because why not? Um, and it's cheap. Uh, so that purple strap, it's like 10 bucks. Um, the chain hoist there, like 80 bucks. And then that load leveler, uh, another 40 bucks. All of it rated for 2,000 pounds. And it's been working great. Um, so, I basically got the beam, I did this one at a time, got the beam, stood it up on edge on the floor, propped it up once I got all cut the length and everything, and propped it up enough to slide those load leveling chains underneath. Um, I used carabiners to, uh, to make the connection, as you can see, and I even got one more to kind of extend it. I, this, is, this is very much kind of Frankenstein with what I had on hand, thanks to my father for all the the fall protection equipment that I use to uh, do the electrical in the uh, living room of the, uh, the, the house, because it was so high, I, I put on a fall protection harness and tied myself off and everything just so I didn't die. 
Um, but in that wonderful kit of equipment, there are some miscellaneous carabiners that were are load rated. And so they're rated for however many thousand pounds. So they can surely lift a, you know, a few hundred pounds of beam and hold it just fine. Um, so that worked out really well. And I just hoisted them in place one at a time. So I got the first one in, um, ran a couple screws in each end just to kind of hold it in place. And then I put some, uh, like that spare block, I put it in the bracket to kind of keep it upright and keep it from swaying until I was ready to drop the second beam in, which is where I am now. Um, and so I'm trying to maneuver this and basically get out of my own way because this load leveler uh, with these chains, they were going in between the beams. So you can kind of see my problem, right? This chain is getting pinched and I got to get that thing out from under there while keeping the beam in place and supporting everything. So I was able to use the load leveler, taking it all the way to extreme to uh, release tension on this back chain. And then I was able to, uh, once this was loose, I was able to fish it and redo it, right? To, to wrap it around both beams to tie them together. And now I'm, I'm gonna re-level the load to hopefully take enough tension off this other one to do the same thing. Now that's gonna be kind of interesting because I, I got lucky on the first time because with uh, doing it that way, I had that dude already on sitting on the post. So the bulk of this beam weight was, was already, you know, relieved and resting on that post. So that helped a lot. Going this other way, this other end is kind of free spinning. And so we'll see how that goes. I may have to drop it down enough and then maybe actually drop it down on a post or some sort of temporary resting place. You know, I may have to do something like, you know, put a cleat up here allow the thing to rest on it, or maybe, you know, maybe like that, probably be easier. Uh, put a cleat there, take the load off, you know, and then uh, re-rig and keep going. So, uh, like I said, quick video, show you what I'm doing. Um, mainly showing you how I'm solving the problem of being pretty much a one-man show on a lot of this. And, you know, yeah, it's easier with two people. Sometimes you do. You have two people, sometimes you don't. And so how do you solve a problem, you know? Would you rather just wait for someone to help you or just try to figure out how to do it yourself? Um, I've had a lot of help on this build so far, and I'm very appreciative of the guys that have helped. Uh, but sometimes you, know, you, you still got to get stuff done. So uh, there's always a way. You just got to think through the problem and, uh, and figure out a solution. So hope you guys found this interesting, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.